Hello kids, we are back with another video lesson here. So I might be losing my mind. This is my seventh video I've made today. So you guys are, I hope, <laughs> I hope this goes okay. So I'm sorry if I act a little loony. I'm excited that this is my last video. So what's exciting is we are doing the exact same thing we were doing in class yesterday, but we're adding one step or maybe two steps. So we're still just solving kind of simple equations, but now they are multi-step. So instead of like a one-stepper, it might be like three or a two-step. Um, again, I'm confident that we will do just fine with this. So it makes notes kind of less daunting when we kind of have an idea of what's going on. So learning goals, we are gonna solve multi-step linear equation using our opposite or inverse operations. Awesome. Let's see our first example here. It says, solve each equation and check your solution. Okay, so as always, when you solve an equation, you're always getting the variable alone. That's your goal. We wanna figure out what is X to make this equation true. So we're thinking, what do I do first? Do I move this 2.5 over or do I move this negative 13? you always move what's not with the X. So I have to get rid of this minus 13 first. So we are gonna do the opposite of subtracting 13 and we are gonna add 13 to both sides. Cause remember it is an equation. It needs to stay balanced on both sides. So nothing's happening to our 2.5 X. We're just gonna drop her down. Negative 13 plus 13, those cancel. So they go away. And now we have to take two plus 13, and we get 15. And now we have a problem that we had um, the other day in notes. It's just a one-stepper. I want to get x by itself. How do I get x by itself here? Well, right now I'm multiplying by 2.5, so we want to divide by 2.5. Again, whatever I do to one side, we have to do to the other because we have to keep things equal. So it's not going to be... Sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. So 15 divided by 2.5 kids is six. We got it. And then it says check your solution. So this is actually why I really do think I love math, honestly, is a lot of times we can check our work. And in a lot of other classes, you can't. Like if you're in Spanish, did I conjugate that verb right? Did I say the right word? No one knows, but in math, a lot of times you can plug your answer in and you can tell if you got it right. So if we're saying X is six, we can plug in. So let's see here, 2.5, instead of writing X, let's plug in what we got for X, which is six minus 13 equals two. So here, if we take our little calculator, if we hit 2.5 times six, I get 15 not changing my 13, I'm dropping down my two. We know that 15 minus 13 is actually two. Drop down my equals two. Does two equal two? Yes, check mark, we're happy, it worked. Good job, we can move on now. So it's kind of nice when you take a quiz or a test or just working on homework, if you're ever questioning, if you're doing it right, always plug back in and see how you did, okay? Let's do number two. On this one, we kind of have a few things we have to take care of. Right now, there's nothing going on with that negative 12. Let's just drop it down because we can't do anything with it. But now on this right side, it gets a little, you have a little few things going on. I have 9x minus 6x. Well, if I combine those like terms, how many x's would I have left? So if I have nine and I take away six, we know we would have three left. And now you can drop down your 15. So we combined those two like terms. And now from here, we just get our variable alone. So I first have to get rid of that 15. So what's the opposite of adding 15? We subtract 15, we subtract 15. So negative 12 minus 15 more, so we're going more negative, and we get negative 27. 
equals 3x, and those cancel. And now again, folks, we just have that simple equation to solve. Um, right now I'm multiplying by three, so what's the opposite of multiplying by three? Well, we divide by three. And now we just take negative 27 divided by three is negative nine equals x. And I just wanna show you that you can check this one as well. So if we plug in negative nine, every time we see an X, we're gonna have negative 12 equals negative, I lied, positive nine first, in parentheses is our negative nine, minus six times negative nine plus 15. Drop down your negative 12, we can't do anything to it. Nine times negative nine is negative 81. Negative six times negative nine is positive 54 plus 15. Drop down your negative 12, and then I'm gonna type the rest of this in my calculator. I have negative 81 plus 54 plus 15, and I get negative 12. Now does negative 12 equal negative 12? Yes, yes it does. We are good to go, we did it right, amazing just like you guys. Okay, we have three more examples to practice together and that is it. So I'm gonna shimmy my paper up so I have the most room because clearly I have mammoth handwriting. Okay. Whew. Okay, our job on this one, we wanna get N alone. So first we gotta get rid of this three before I can even touch anything with that two. So right now I'm adding three. What's the opposite of adding three? We subtract three. Subtract three. Drop down your negative two in. Our threes cancel. Nine minus three is six. Good work. And now I'm taking negative two times n. What's the opposite of timesing by negative two? You're right, dividing by negative two. Our negative twos cancel. We are just left with n. Six divided by negative two is indeed negative three. So you can plug in or, or write it out by hand. But I wanna show you, you could just type this whole thing in your calculator. So look, I see a negative two, so I'm gonna type in negative two. Now I don't have an n on my calculator, but we just found that it equals negative three. So I'm gonna put that in parentheses, negative three, in parentheses, okay? Plus, now what's next in our equation? Three. And I got nine. Did I want it to equal nine? Heck yes, I did. So if you wanna check it without doing it by hand like we did up here, you can just put a little check mark like, yeah, I know that's right, I checked it in my calculator. The only cautionary thing I wanna tell you about doing it in your calculator Calculators are only as smart as you make them. Um, whatever you punch in, it will tell you the answer, but if you punch it in wrong, it's not gonna know you punched it in wrong. It, it'll think whatever you type in is right. So if you put your parentheses in the wrong spot or you forgot a negative, it's not gonna know. So just be aware that you could type it in wrong and get the wrong answer. Does that make sense? So however comfortable you are, either doing it by hand or in your calculator, do one of those two options. Okay, number two, let's see here. So our goal, remember, is to get the variable alone. So that is C in this case here. We first have to move at minus 11. So what's the opposite of minus 11? Well, we're gonna add 11. So negative 21 plus 11 gets us to negative 10. Drop down your negative one over two C and then these 11s cancel. Okay, now we're kind of at that weird thing again that I think we had last time in our notes. I have this weird fraction. I don't know how to deal with it. What do we do? Well, remember that fraction bar really just means to divide. So right now I'm saying divide by negative two. Well, what's the opposite of dividing by negative two? Multiplying by a negative two, multiply both sides by negative two. So if I do that here, 
negative 2 times 10 is positive 20. And negative 2 and this negative 2 cancel, so we're just left with a C. So 20 equals C. Okay, let's check. Let's practice checking in our calculator. We can't do anything with that. Oh, I'll shimmy. There we go. We can't do anything with that negative 21, right? So let's type in negative half. Well, we know a half as a decimal is just 0.5. So negative 0.5. Plug in 20 for our C, so that's in parentheses, right? And now we have minus 11. And I get negative 21, which is what we wanted. So again, check all is well in the world. We did it. All right, we are on our last problem here. I encourage you to pause the video and try this one on your own. See how it goes by yourself, thinking alone, and then check back with me and see how you did. Did you pause it? I hope you did. Okay, I'm gonna start regardless if you pause it or not. I really hope you did though, okay? So before we can do anything here, do you guys see how we have like terms? Let's combine those together and then we'll solve. So I, I have negative two X and I'm subtracting 10 more. So negative two minus 10 more is negative 12 X. And now we can write down the rest of the problem as we see it. So plus 12 equals 18. So our goal now is to get X alone. So I need to get that variable all by itself. So I first have to move this 12. What's the opposite of adding 12? Subtracting 12, subtracting 12. So I drop down my negative 12 X. These say see you later. 18 minus 12 gives me six. Now again, when you have a number next to a variable, that means multiply. So how do I undo multiply by negative 12? Divide by negative 12. So then we find that X equals, okay, we're gonna get a fraction, a decimal. You could write this two ways. We can simplify. How does six over 12 reduce? It reduces to negative a half, right? Or we know that negative a half is really negative 0 0.5. And just for good measure, let's check one more time. So again, take out your handy dandy calculator. And let's see here, we have negative two parentheses. I'm gonna use the decimal version because it's a little easier in a calculator. So times negative 0.5 and parentheses minus 10, start your parentheses, negative 0.5 um, plus 12. I had, I got 18, we wanted 18, all is well, we are done. Okay, that's it for today. We will do the back of this note page the next time we have notes. Again, any questions, comments, concerns, send me an email, tell me in class, do not be afraid to let me know. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you when I see you. Bye.